Today on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Tips and Tech, Trevor's going to show you how to paint your fingers! Yay! No, Danny, we're not going to be painting our fingers today. We're not doing that today? Well then, what are we doing, Trevor? Danny, we're going to be painting our figures, as in model kit figures. And I've got a really cool one for all you nostalgia guys out there. Today we are going to be painting, dun dun dun, the Fonz. That's right, good old Arthur Fonzarelli from Happy Days. Remember that show? <laughs> well, if you were part of Gen X, you watched it in reruns. If you were the boomers, you watched it going weekly back in the 70s. Anyway, the figure that we're going to be painting is the one out of this kit. Actually, not really. This one's on loan from James, our good friend who's let us take a look at model kits in the past. I actually have a resin copy of the Fonz out of this kit, which, let's just put that down nice and safe and grab our little Fonzie here. It's this one. Now, I've had this for years, decades even, and I'm not really sure where I got it. I think it was like a model kit, uh, like a show, and somebody had a bunch of figures and whatever, and I, I got one of the Fonz. And he's a really good uh, reproduction. I know a lot of guys say, hey, don't, Trevor, what are you doing? Don't do recasts. But, you know, it's, it's as best as it can get. And uh, I don't know what to say. Anyway, don't hate me in the comments down below. Okay, but uh, interesting thing about the Fonz. Now, how many of you guys had this record? Remember this <laughs> back in the day? And it says on the back here, no, the Fonz has not taken to singing on this album. That was a close call. Better, he has chosen favorite 50s records to share with you. And then it's got all of them in here. So if you want to like, uh, somebody's probably uploaded this album to YouTube, but if you guys want to, you know, um, check out the records on here, we've got uh, the Happy Days theme, of course. Charlie Brown from the Coasters, Splish Splash by Bobby Darren, Bird Dog by the Everly Brothers, You Talk Too Much, <laughs> Joe, Joe Jones, Barbara Ann by the Regents, Great Balls of Fire from Jerry Lee Lewis, Rock Around the Clock, which is a, a song that pretty much started the rock and roll thing. Uh, uh, Bill Hilly in the comments, of course. Then we have The Fonzarelli Slide by Frank Lydon. And the Fonz song by the Hayet, Hayettes, H-E-Y-E-T-T-E-S, Hayettes, hey, I don't know. Then there's the Impressionist track. Now that's the one that has a cool nerd sit on it, <laughs> which were like from Happy Days, remember? And then on side two, you have Could This Be Magic by the Dubs, I Only Have Eyes For You by the Flamingos, Tears on my pillow, pain in my heart, caused by you. <laughs> Little Anthony and the Imperials. Then you got Maybe by the Chantels. Little Star by the Elegance. A Million to One, Jimmy Charles. In the Still of the Night, The Five Saints. Silhouettes, The Rays. Since I Don't Have You, The Skyliners. Heart and Soul by the Cleftones. And Yeah Yeah by Lee Dorsey. Hmm. Manufactured by Precision Records, Toronto, Ontario, Canadian one. Printed in Canada, 1976. So maybe you guys in the U.S. never got this one. I don't know. It says the latest, oh, the last selection on this album is an impressionist track containing the expressions "cool," "a," "nerd," "sit on it," "listen and learn to use Fonz's favorite phrases perfectly." Okay, but anyway. Before we get to painting this, uh, the interesting part is, as you see on the back here, you got the Fonz. Kind of look like this, eh? Hey! <laughs> uh, doing his famous... All right, you fall down over there. Uh, that ain't cool. <laughs> oh, he's standing on the scale here, but see, he's got blue jeans on. Now, the jacket on here, on the album, it looks really black. Uh, I was watching some Happy Days footnotes on the web, uh, video things, and it says that they never did use a black leather jacket. It was dark brown. 
because the uh, executives figured, hey, we can't show our main guy looking like a thug, right? So they convinced, or whoever was in charge convinced the executives that Fonzie would always wear a brown leather jacket because the black one was supposed to be the rebel jacket. And I don't know, whatever. So um, I don't know how I should paint them. Let me know in the comments below. Do you think I should put on the black leather jacket or the brown leather jacket? Let me know. So without further ado, let's go down and I'll show you and Danny the dog how to paint our figures. Not our fingers, but that might be inevitable. So let's go down and check that out. So Danny, in order to begin painting our resin figure, the first thing we need to do is clean up any seam lines or whatever else might be in the way of him standing up straight as well as the seam lines interfering with our finished paint job. Now this resin figure luckily was glued together properly because as we saw he came originally from the MPC kit which would have been a plastic model with a, a front and a back. So luckily whoever uh, made this resin copy glued the model together properly because sometimes I've seen where the top of the figure or the front of the figure and the back of the figure are glued together by somebody who didn't align them so you've got you know a bit of overhang on one side from the front overhanging and then on the back you've got the back coming up and overhanging and then you've got to kind of scrape them together and you lose a bit of roundness and detail and everything else luckily that's not the case whoever did this really uh, really did a good job actually so in order to clean them up I've got our number 11 hobby knife our number 16 just in case now these will be good to get you know under arms and <clears throat> between legs and everything and then I have our sandpaper on our MDF and I would use this to just sand down on his boots a little bit you know like like this sort of thing just to make sure he's gonna stand up okay but I do believe this Fawn's figure is not having a hard time standing up so what I will do is off camera I will clean them up with the hobby tools and then we'll get into painting the Fawn's all right here we have the Fawn's after I've scraped down the seam lines and sanded his feet flat uh, now there is one seam line it's actually a groove and it goes down the side of his pant leg here same on the other side that's actually where the two legs of the pants would be sewn together on the real jeans of course uh, now one thing i forgot to tell you guys if you do have resin figures and you sand them this is a very fine dust sort of talcum powder kind of stuff so make sure you wear a face mask and uh, that will protect your lungs of course from it so now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and i'm going to gather up all the paints and hey danny can you talk like the fawns hey i can speak like the fawns too hey cool sit on it hey danny that was a pretty cool impersonation of the fawns now, I just want to show you something, Danny, before we begin gathering up our paints here. And that, of course, is from the original Fonzie Dream Rod, the instruction sheets from MPC. And this is why it really pays for you to do your research whenever you're going to paint figures. So if you want to see something pretty vague for painting the fawns here, this is the instruction sheet. And as you can see, there's his front, there's his back, gloom together, have a nice day. There's no paint charts, nothing. <laughs> so you really have to do your research on the fawns to know what colors to paint them. Oh, that makes more sense. So Danny, as you can see, those instructions from the old days were really quite vague. But I guess the idea was to, of course, watch the TV show because it was on every, you know, Friday night or whatever, as well as to look at the research material like our record album cover and the top of the box so what we're going to do is we're going to start with his pants which of course were blue jeans so uh, this is the basic principle of all the games workshop paints you start with the base color which in this case is Calidore sky then when the base color is dry you add in a shade which goes into all the cracks and everything 
of Drakenhof Nightshade. Uh, this is, of course, for our blue color. It'll be different for other colors. Then we have a layer one, which is techless blue in this case. Layer two. Oh, so layer one will bring up the dark wash and make it sort of like the base color, but a little lighter. And then this Lorthurn blue, which is layer number two, will brighten it up even more. Then we have a dry, a dry brushing color we're using called Ethereum Blue, and that will be followed by a glaze over the entire thing of Gulliman Blue. Now, depending on what colors you're going to be using, like for the browns, of course they're going to be the brown tones, but usually there isn't the glaze. The glaze only came in red, yellow, blue, and green, and basically goes for those colors. What it, the glaze does is to blend everything to make it pretty much a universal tone. So it's interesting. I'll show you what I mean as we go along here. Here are the basic supplies that we're going to be using to start off painting Fonzarelli's blue jeans. So what I have here is the Citadel Standard Brush, a base color of Calidor Sky, our little mixing dish right here, and our water bowl, oops, right there. So normally when I paint any figures, I usually spray paint them with a primer color, and that is to protect the uh, top coat here from the any of the chemicals in the resin and whatnot and act as a good blocker. A primer will also help in your color definitions. So if you use like a black color or something as a primer, then generally the colors are going to be a bit darker than if you used a lighter gray or even a white. So uh, in this case though, I want to get the video going as soon as possible. So I'm going to forgo using the primer. Um, now, I would recommend, though, if you are going to do this, to use some sort of primer. But at any rate, we are going to begin with our base coat of Calidor Sky. And since this is a acrylic enamel, uh, of course, oh, not really an enamel, but an acrylic paint, we can clean it up with soap and water. So let's get this going. So what we want to do first is just get our brush wet here. This is to prime it in order for the paint to flow nicely. So just open our Calidor Sky and we're going to just take a little bit of this and go over on our mixing palette and just sort of work it into the brush and whatnot. And then we can start to paint the pants here. Just got to move this out of the way. So there we're starting to get some blue on there. Just like I did with our old 1910 female mechanics set. It's going on the exact same way. And we want to return to the little bit on our mixing plate. Not necessarily the bottle. Okay, so painting under the jacket and all that. If I keep continuing to go here, we'll have his pants painted all blue. So I'm quite a fair distance away from the camera, so what I'll do is I'll continue with the Calidor Sky on his jeans, and then we'll come back and we'll do the Drakenhof Nightshade Wash. So here's Fonzie after the Calidor Sky has dried. That, of course, is our blue base color. So now we're going to apply the shade, which is Drakenhof Nightshade. Now this will go into all the cracks and, of course, make it darker in there, just like the real thing. So what's nice about these shades is that they're already pre-mixed. You just need to shake them a little bit. And then, of course, get it into your brush. Let's see. Grab Fonzie here. And you just paint it on nice and thick. And as you can see, it's going into all the cracks and crevices. And it'll come out looking quite nice. So I will continue here, where I can see it a little better. Uh, with this stuff, you don't really need to worry about it running and... Well, of course, you don't want it to pool anywhere either. So, uh, let's just see. Can I get this with one hand? Probably not. <laughs> okay, so you want to keep going here. Get it all the way around. This 
is the paint that takes the longest time to dry. So uh, do this and then go take a break. <laughs> but yeah, you can see how it uh, is going into all the little crevices and cracks. It's coming up quite nice. So you, for your younger generations that may not know this, if you've ever heard that term, jumping the shark, that came from Happy Days. There's an episode where uh, it's summertime and Fonzie, uh, <laughs> he rode a motorbike in the show and uh, they had this really goofy summertime special. And essentially they're at the beach somewhere and there's sharks in the beach. And for whatever reason, somebody thought it would make a good story if Fonzie took his motorbike and jumped over top of the sharks. And I wish I was joking there, but it actually happened. And that episode was, like, really bad. It was a bomb. People didn't like it. <laughs> and uh, the term jumping the shark came from that episode. So there, as you can see, that's how you want to apply that Drakenhof Nightshade. And uh, now we take a long time letting it dry, maybe about half an hour. <laughs> the regular um, acrylic paints usually take about five or ten minutes to dry. This stuff takes <laughs> half an hour, maybe 45 minutes. Never actually timed it. But anyway, that's how he looks for now. And once it all dries, I'll start the camera rolling again, and we will apply our first layer of Teclas Blue. So it's been about 45 minutes or more, and the Drakenhof Nightshade has uh, dried up in the pants. And as you can see, it does put sort of a darker, sort of a stain on there. So what we want to do now is bring up our shadows into the regular color. And for that, we're going to use this first layer of Teclas Blue from the Games Workshop. And I've got this brush here. This is a stiffer type of brush. This is a number four artist series. I got this in a multi-pack at Walmart. They had a big bag of paint brushes. So this is one I found. And as you can see, the bristles are pretty stiff on it. So what we're going to do is we're not going to prime this with the water this time around because we don't really want the paint to flow. What we want to do is open up our Teclas Blue and just touch the edges of the brush into the blue. Just sort of like that. Then we're going to take it on our plate and we're just going to try to wipe out as much of this as we can. And we're going to use a dry brush technique. Just see here. So yeah, you just want the paint to sort of come out of there. Just like it did on my finger here. <laughs> I know I might have gone off camera. So I'll just move this over a little. And what we want to do is just lightly... Uh, just go over the top. And as you can see, the blue is hitting the highlights. So all the wrinkles in his jeans that are up. Let's go on the back pant pockets there. And there, see? You can see it's starting to bring the highlights forward. And it's dry enough in there that it's leaving the shadows in the cracks. So now we're getting some definition to these pant legs. And it's starting to look quite a bit brighter. I guess we should also go here. So there, now you can see the difference in the pants. And they're looking a bit more like denim. So that is basically the technique. And now we'll go into the next layer. So after the first layer of Teclas Blue, we get into the Lothurn Blue, which will brighten it up even more. Now with this, you sort of want to do it in a way of... Fonzie's going to be standing up. And how would this paint work if we're the sun and we're going from the top down. So that's sort of how you want to use the Lothurn blue. So again, the same technique. 
you just want to get enough on the ends of the bristle of the brush. I didn't even clean my brush from the other blue, which is okay, because this stuff dries pretty quick. And I didn't want to get water in the brush. Okay, so Fonzie's standing like this. So now the sun... I know, my hand's in the way. It's coming down like this. Just a little on the tops of the pockets. Here, maybe I can move it this way. It'll be coming down there, so it's hitting the the tops of the crinkles of his jeans. And the pant pocket there. Okay, so there it is there, getting brighter as we go from the light source downwards. So I was going to add in some Ethereum Blue with the dry brush paint and then put the Gulliman Blue glaze over top of everything, but I don't really think it's too necessary. I think I've kind of got the look I'm after. This uh, lighter color works well if, you know, Fonz is standing up and I need the light color to go down the lengths of his arms or whatever where the sun's hitting. But because of the way the jeans are and uh, its relationship to light sources and whatnot, I think I've basically done all I can do. And then there's no sense in using the blue to uh, patch it over. So I will carry on with the skin tone next. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to get the lighter colors on first before we darken it in with the jacket and the boots. So I'll get the skin colors all ready. Oh, now that's a really cool way to do it. Hey! So here's the four colors we're going to be using for the skin tones. We're going to start off with the base co color of Bugman's Glow, followed by the Reichlan Flesh Shade. And that's a shade paint. And then our layer one will be Cadian Flesh Tone, followed by layer two, Kislev Flesh. And this should give us all the skin variations for Fonzie's face and hands. And here we have our first color, our base coat of Bugman's Glow. And again, I've switched back to our Citadel Games Workshop brush, which I'm going to prime in the water. There we go, so we're all ready to go. Bring over my little mixing dish. And then we'll just open up our flesh tone. Our Bugman's Glow, I guess. Bugman is a dwarf character from Games Workshop. Owns a brewery, Bugman's Brew. Okay, so we're going to add this on where Fonz's face and neck are. Okay, taken from our palette over here. Get it in nice and fine. Maybe I'll just grab a bit from there. Okay. So basically this is that undertoning color. I think his ears are pretty much covered by his hairdo. Okay, so there's his face kind of tanned, I guess. And then we'll do our, the hands. Don't worry about getting on the jacket area for now, because once we get into that paint, it will cover it. We can block it in with the side of our brush and cover it all over. Okay, 
You know, there's many different guest stars that were on Happy Days in its uh, series of running on TV. And one of the guest stars was actually Tom Hanks. And a lot of these guys guest starred when they were just starting off in show business and were unknowns. Oh, another person that started his career from Happy Days was Robin Williams doing his Mork uh, character from Mork from Ork, which was also a huge big hit. In fact, he did it. <laughs> he did his Mork character as just a goofy uh, one episode thing on Happy Days. And after he did that, people liked it so much. Now, I can't remember if he did two shows with uh, Happy Days, but basically after he did <laughs> the show on Happy Days, right away they did the whole Mork from Ork uh, show. So interesting. There's Tom Hanks and Robin Williams. And if you know anybody else, let us know down in the comments below. Now that the bug man's glow has dried up in here, we can apply our Reichland Flesh Shade, which again is one of those paints that takes a long time to dry, but that's okay. So, like I said before, we don't really need our mixing bowl on this because the Reichland Flesh Shade is pretty watery. So now, just like on the jeans, we can apply this quite liberally into his face and neck area. And as you can see, it is starting to go down into all the cracks and crevices. We're starting to get a kind of a shadow effect in here. Just going to remove a bit out of his neck area. There we go. And then we'll get his hands in here. <laughs> Look at the color of this jacket. It's sort of like a kind of gross mustard yellow. Imagine if Fonz actually wore that on this show. <laughs> I don't think he'd be quite as cool if he did. <laughs> anyway. Well, again, this leather jacket could, if you painted it differently, like red and white or something, it could look like one of those old 50s uh, school jackets that they used to have. Put a big RH on there, Rydell High. Oh, wait, that's Archie, isn't it? <laughs> the Archies. Okay, so there he is with that flesh shade in there. So again, now I gotta go do something else for like half an hour for this Reichland flesh shade to dry out in here. And then we can apply the Cadian flesh tone. Now our Reichland flesh shade has had enough time to dry, so we're going to add in our first layer, which is the Cadian flesh tone. And again, we're going to use our stiff bristled brush and our little uh, paint dish here. So we'll just uh, open up our Cadian Flesh Tone. And again, you just want to get a little bit on the end of the brush and wipe off the excess onto our dish. And then we'll start from the top down and just use the weight of the brush and we can start to uh, bring up Fonzie's face here. Henry Winkler is the actor that played Fonzie, of course. And we can kind of see that it's brightening up the flesh tones. Let's just get a little more paint here. So with the first layer, of course, you want to try to get everywhere. And remember that you're not trying to dig the brush in. You're just trying to get whatever paint is in the bristles out onto the model. And still leave a bit of that uh, shade in there. Just to get the skin tones right. So there we're starting to get sort of more correct into the color of like the lighter flesh tone. Oh, there we go. There. <laughs> Camera went out of focus there a little bit. Okay. And there we have the fingers.
And there we go. That's quite easy. Once again, using our stiff brush, we're going to apply the second layer, which is our Kislev Flesh. And of course, this is the lightest tone that we have. And on this one, we're going to apply it from the top down, as if the sun is hitting the fawns. So we just shake this up a little, pop the top, and I'm going to just tap the ends of the bristles. Okay, and then I'm wiping this off over here. I loaded the brush a little heavy. Okay, so we're going from the top down. And then on the tops of these thumbs. There we go. Just as the sun would hit them. And this is just basically that same technique again. Just trying to bring the highlights out. So there's our Fonzie right there with the skin tones on. Whoa, so that's how you paint the flesh tones. Cool! Well, I'm glad you like those skin tones, Danny, because next up we're going to do his boots, hair, and potentially his jacket. And we're going to do the brown color, so we're using Rhinox Hide, Agrath Earth Shade, Doom Bowl Brown, and Tuscor Fur. Now I'm not going to show you how to paint this because it's the same technique again as we did with the pants and the skin tone. We're also going to add in whoops, uh, some white scar here into his shirt and then for the whites of his eyes. And the... Uh, the Fonz, Henry Winkler, he had brown eyes, so we're going to use Rhinox Hide and just dot it in there. And uh, yeah, it should look pretty good, Danny, once we get all this together. Now I said potentially on the jacket. I'm going to give it a try with the brown and just sort of see how it looks. And if I think it looks kind of too weird, I might just change it into black. So if that's the case, I will... Uh, do this kind of panel again and show you the different paints. So now off camera I'm going to add in all these colors on Fonzie and then I'll come back and I'll show you just how he looks. And there's the Fonz after all the paint has been put on. So what do you think Danny? Wow that is so cool! I really like what you did to Fonzie there! Thank you very much for the nice compliment Danny. So what I've used is the skin tones on his head and hands. And then I've used the brown combination for the jacket, his hair, and his boots. And then I've used the blue combination for his blue jeans, of course. I've used white scar for his shirt. And then getting away from the Citadel paints, I used some Tester's silver paint for this zipper here. And I think he's looking pretty cool. A. Now one other thing I did just to make the uh, hair look a little different and to stand out from his jacket is there's a dry brush color called Terminatus Stone and I just used that lightly to highlight his hair just so that it looks like the sun is on it and to make it you know stand out as best I could from the leather jacket as you can see about there. I mean it might have made him look a little older. <laughs> I don't know. But at any rate, there is our Fonzarelli. Well, I hope you enjoyed that Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage episode of Tips and Techs where I got to show you how to paint your fingers. Actually, your figures. 
especially the fawns. Hey, cool, sit on it. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so if you enjoyed that episode, please let us know down in the comments below. How many figures have you painted? Do you use figures? Because I know a lot of people, they uh, don't really use figures in their models, but then other people build dioramas and whatever. I thought it'd be cool to paint the fawns just because, you know, if I got these uh, 1950s era hot rods and everything else, it's nice to actually have a photograph with the fawns or somebody in behind it. And interestingly enough, I did have another figure. It was a female figure also wearing a leather jacket, sort of like a compliment to the fawns. But I lost her somewhere, probably in the High River Flood. Oh well, what can you do? So anyway, I know one thing you can do. You can like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell because every time I make a new video with Danny the dog, I want you to be the first one to see it. And the only way to do that is, of course, with your notifications so that it will let you know when a new video is up. And anyway, until next time, everybody, stay cool. Ayy. Well, I think that brings another great video to a close. It was real fun making it, and I hope you all learned something from it. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave those down in the descriptions below. And if you enjoyed watching these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound the notification button down below so that every time I make a new video, you are the first ones to see it. If you'd like to shop with us at Monster Hobbies, don't forget to check out our web address, www.monster-hobbies.ca. Again, I'll leave it in the description below. If you want to support us on Patreon, because, well, YouTube is... it We are monetized. YouTube does pay us, but it's sort of up and down based on views. If you'd like to support us with something a little more steady, visit our Patreon account like these great people here have done. Thank you all for your support over on Patreon. It's uh, pretty easy. I'll leave the link for that in the description below as well. Again, if you want to share some great stuff with us, do it on our Facebook page. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.